Hello and welcome to a new live stream here from our Card Shark studio in Essen, uh, Germany. Thank you for joining us either live or in a recorded form one or two days later. Uh, you are here with Card Shark, the renowned producer of effects that are um, simply amazing, but amazingly simply uh, simple to perform. Uh, my focus is on the uh, presentation and therefore it's easier to do this with uh, easy to do magic tricks so yeah stay tuned you will see several of those you might notice that i'm today alone philo is not here um he, uh, he will join me next week uh, the same like mark he was not able to join me today no worries you will have fun as well and before we start uh, let's do this And here we go. Today is um, yeah second part of of a series. <laughs> now it's a series of of uh, YouTube streams. Uh, it was supposed to be just one week, and we started this last week. It was about packet tricks, um, the history and the beginning of card shark. As you might see, if I go to the side, you will see packet tricks. Yes. So um, yeah. yesterday we started all this. Unfortunately, um, we had. Sad news because Obi O'Brien, a uh, good mentor of mine, uh, who allowed me to go to the 4F uh, convention for several weeks, and also an, uh, who announced me to be one of the future guest of honors at the 4F convention, um, sadly passed away after um, yeah after, after a very short time. And uh, yeah, uh, now it's time to move on. And uh, we talked about packet tricks. I ran out of time, or we ran out of time last week. Uh, this time, uh, Philo cannot join me. He still has some health issues. It's not about the C thing that you might think. No, no, no. Um, and uh, so, yeah, today was the decision. Do I do it alone or will we uh, remove it again to, Thursday, uh, to Tuesday? And I thought, okay, let's give it a try. Uh, these two guys, Mark and Philo, uh, replaced me for so long, three months after my stroke in February. I wanted to do it by myself. The first stream in German language uh, at uh, one and a half hours ago, um, I needed additional help because the ATEM that we are using for all the camera controls uh, was failing and I did not have this uh, as as an error so uh, mark helped me to fix that um, issue and now i was able to do the whole thing very first time <laughs> so i'm a little bit proud of myself here on obs and uh, yeah so here we are uh, this time mark is not here in the chat as well and he's not checking my computer so if anything fails this is 100 percent my fault <laughs> and why not so um, today is second part of the packet tricks that we produced and that we produced in the past maybe discontinued or they uh, fell uh, were victims in our warehouse fire four years ago and were not re-released yet uh, but might come back very soon again and uh, I would like to show you some of them so that you might uh, see what you miss, if you would like to get your hands on it, etc., etc. Oh, there is Mark. That's perfect. <laughs> but he's not near the computer, only on his phone. <laughs> That's what he told me. <laughs> Let's see. If I see a mouse moving here over my screen while I'm watching you, <laughs> then I know he's, he's, he's closer to the computer. Anyhow. Um, yeah, we would like to talk, or I would like to talk about several um, different packet tricks. Uh, I wanted also to go into some several movements that I would like to teach you and, and, and show you uh, the slides that are um, um, very important for doing packet tricks, like the Hammond count, um, Elmsley count, Jordan count. Uh, several of those um, are 
so so basic and necessary that you should uh, master them um, however it might be that uh, it will be a third week uh, next monday we will we maybe do these uh, moves and i guess it would be better because our german stream was shorter than i thought i ran out of time again so we will uh, postpone this to next week and today it will all be about the history and uh, the presentation of several of our packet tricks and some I will explain. So uh, let's see what we have in, in our uh, list here. Well, the first one was one of the very, very, very old tricks. And at the beginning, I have to say that uh, Kartschak was more focused on the German community. I thought, okay, there was a German producer missing for German magicians and therefore um, the first uh, the first produced packet tricks were all in German language and uh, focused for the German community uh, until I found out that the niche of magicians is very small plus the you know, focusing only on the German community would even make it more difficult to stay afloat and uh, therefore I also figured out that I have to be international to um, keep up with being card shark so um, when i started in 2006 more or less um, it was german at the beginning after one or two years i i learned uh, i have to go outside of germany as well and therefore the first gem i would like to show you is more of a trick uh, with german background and you will understand very very soon why um, some of the signs you might recognize the, uh, let me show, show you this one. It's called Richtig Verkehrt. What me? I, I don't even know if I made the instructions also in English language. And I guess it was. It's about uh, traffic signs. And um, unfortunately, I focused on uh, traffic signs in, uh, in Germany. And I'm sure that around the world we have different other uh, traffic signs. And therefore, making something that would, uh, that would uh, fit uh, around the world might be very difficult and therefore this trick was only released for the German community. However, I would like to show you the idea and maybe it will work for you as well because we do custom prints as well and maybe uh, you want to adjust and, uh, this idea and, and do it for yourself for a presentation and I can help you um, yeah, release, uh, uh, produce these cards just for you. Uh, that would be my pleasure. What you get with the trick is a bunch of cards with traffic uh, signs on it. Let me show you. Um, by the way, the backs are still uh, from the time when uh, we were uh, having the high sickle backs. Let me show this to you, as you can see. So uh, there was the old car shark logo with uh, the shark having a crown on of the King of Hearts and so on and so on. We had the, uh, the car shark, uh, the, the, also the shark in the corners to avoid uh, being very similar to the bicycle backs. However, yeah, the stop sign, yes, is international. You will see that in the, the, the other signs will have more difficulties. We will see which ones are good, which, which ones not. So we have the stop sign. Uh, this is already a sign. I guess this also exists in different other language, uh, um, countries, in Europe at least. We have that one, uh, the um, priority lane. I, I'm 100% sure that we have this. Uh, let's do it in a way that, yeah, uh, that you can help me in a second. Uh, this could already be tricky. Some would have it, some not. This is uh, our our sign for an area where only uh, pedestrians are allowed. Um, this is a pedestrian crossing. I guess this is more or less international, but you will see. Uh, yeah, I could adjust it. Anyhow, we have uh, three more pedestrians not allowed. We have. The bicycles not allowed and uh, that is our sign for um, right over left so that uh, you always have to stop and look to the right. Um, what is interesting, the Americans have actually this sign in the combination, the stop sign with this. That means uh, they have stop on every four corners. So whoever comes first to the, to the crossing is allowed to be the first leaving the crossing again. So uh, a very interesting um, approach to this that works uh, really, really well. And then we have a few blank cards that you can uh, write on, etc. Otherwise, this trick would not work that nicely. Now, um, we have uh, three rows, uh, six cards. We have several guests here in the, uh, 
in the stream so i'm asking i will ask in a minute uh, michael and happy clean you can choose uh, one of the symbols here you will either name it or say second row in the middle or left or right that we can select them in the meantime i will do a prediction for uh let's do um michael first um yeah Okay, this is my, my first one. I put it here onto the table next to this one. That's Michael. And then we have uh, um, Happy Clean. Okay. I will do that one as well. And I put it to the other side as a prediction. Need these two. So, um, no more writing. That's all done. Um, could you please? Yeah, it's not bicycle. You know, it, the, I call them high sickle, and high sickle is um, ah, okay. Thank you for give give way. Oh, give way is what is give way? Is it this one? I'm not even sure that this is the one. Is it? Okay, I, I guess that this is the one. And you have pedestrians crossing. That would be this one. If 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 this is correct, what I'm just doing. Uh, otherwise, uh, correct me. Otherwise, I keep it like this. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, with the high sickle back design, high in German language means uh, Vorfahrt gewähren. Vorfahrt gewähren, ah, more or less, I guess then this is it. Okay, you see my English and, and I'm just renting a car and drive how far I get until a police car stops me and then it's over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, the high sickle back design was uh, way before the mandolin and the maiden um, in, uh, in a time when uh, As Altenburger, the German playing card company that is also owned, what is funny, by Carter Mundi and now also somehow is related to bicycle because Carter Mundi bought not only As Altenburger but also US playing card a year ago. It's the other one! Nah! Damn it! Okay. Must be this one. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, anyhow, it's, it's all in the same family, so it doesn't really matter. It was just funny when I had my business cards with that back design and I went to USPC and, and uh, the very first time and I gave away my business card with a seemingly bicycle ripoff uh, on the back. That was kind of funny. The first sign was perfect. It's the red border triangle. Perfect. There we go. Just in case, imagine I would have uh, uh, selected the other one. My prediction maybe is not right, but we will see in a second. So uh, we had this sign here and that one over, a sign over here, and you won't believe 100% uh, perfect. Uh, let me show you to this. Uh, here we have exactly that one, and here as well, uh, the sign, and here the pedestrians crossing. So a 100% match, and uh, if you figure out how it works, it's all for you, otherwise I will not explain it. I think it's too easy for an explanation. If you need it, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll just put it away. And we are ready to go for the second one. I hope you liked it. Hmm. Did I give it just away? <clears throat> okay, that was Richtig verkehrt, or I have no idea how I would translate it into, into English language. Uh, First time, ah, okay. <laughs> Damn it, I flashed. <laughs> okay, happens, happens, happens. And now, uh, the next trick or the next two tricks have a, let's say this, yes. Uh, one of my first ever uh, produced um, sheets that I did at Us Altenburger was the, when I, when I uh, quit the cooperation with a German dealer who was kind of ignoring copyrights of magic tricks from around the world. Um, nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very nice. But uh, uh, anyhow, um, my first um, sheet that I had to fill with packet tricks was having, for instance, Mona Lisa's secret. And it also had an effect called coloring butterflies. Coloring butterflies is no longer available. I could reprint it just in a short, in a, in a, in a small quantity. However, I think the uh, successor of coloring butterflies is even nicer. The idea was um, that my very first beginning in magic, when I did my very first, no, when I when I uh, went to the very first international lecture, 
I, I saw Richard Sanders in, in Wuppertal nearby and I was totally flashed. Nice guy anyhow. Um, and everything he showed was wonderful and I bought everything from him. And one of the things that I bought from him, uh, besides of the shoelace thing, and I don't remember the other ones, was a DVD called Supercars. Great ideas, all done with uh, a, a repositionable spray glue called uh, Creative Mount by 3M. I highly recommend this spray. Uh, you should have one at home, it will last for years. Uh, we are using it for several of our tricks uh, and it's really good. And back then on this DVD that is not available anymore, I guess, um, was a packet trick that was included and it was called 10. Now, several years later, I guess maybe three or four years ago, uh, Richard Sanders uh, released this trick again under the name Ace. Um, and the idea was that he would show um, um, four jokers and they would turn inside the hand of a spectator into aces. Back then they were 10. Now I have to say it's kind of a twist to another effect, another packet trick that was even more successful and I heard numbers that are flattening me, uh, 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 are, are freaking me out. It's by um, X Elmwood Magic and it was called NFW, no fucking uh, way. Um, and this was kind of the same cards, however, it was a different handling and it was a very clean, very straightforward uh, transposition of four cards. Um, I had no idea at that time that NFW existed and I think that my idea was completely based on uh, 10 uh, of the super cards. Now, um, I loved the cards myself. I used them for years as, um, as being a magician as well and not card shark at that time. And when I had to do my very first print run, I was thinking, would I do something where I would not only having a, a fake bicycle bag with the, with the high cycle bags, but I also have to do a fake joker. Who would he look like? Does it make, by the way, sense to change jokers into tens or into aces? Is it really magical? Or would there be another idea that makes even more sense? And I came up with another transformation that is in nature and so strong that people would even refer more to it. And that was uh, in nature, the, the transformation from caterpillars to butterflies. So I, did, uh, I had kids drawings of, uh, of, of, of caterpillars, uh, was able to show them. And in the hand of a spectator, they turned into colorful butterflies. Now, this was meant to be a, a trick for kids and it turned out to be um, a trick for ladies. I did this a lot for women and they loved this routine and I got so great feedback, especially the feedback uh, from magicians. Oh, you know, you know the web where you, uh, of, of Jim Pace where you're adding a spider on the back of the, of the hand, you have to do this as well and whatsoever. And um, it took me a while until I thought, okay, maybe I should do it um, or not. So I released two effects. It was called Metamorphosis and Metamorphosis Pro. And the Pro version had the idea of, the, uh, of something sticking on the back of the hands. Now we are here alone. I can only show you the, uh, the normal version, but I will tell you what is different to the Pro version in a second. Because the coloring butterflies then turned into metamorphosis when I started doing storytelling magic. It all made sense. Having these old cards, just let me show you what I meant. I, I mean with this. So uh, let me get out this old envelope. Um, so now uh, this is my uh, grandfather, um, and well, at this time he was he was just two years ago, uh, old and. Uh, he left to America back then and uh, this photo was taken in San Francisco and uh, yeah, uh, I was told that he um, had something very magical on him and um, it was a heritage from our, comp uh, from our uh, family and I got everything in here in this envelope and inside here are a few cards that he kept as a child and I will show you in a second. Um, um, these were cards, educational style, Victorian age, um, around um, yeah, the, the beginning of 19th century, 20th century, that uh, the kids uh, got these and they could uh, not only learn about uh, the nature, 
uh, but they could also colorize uh, all the black and white images. Let me show you. Um, it's it's just uh, four cards all together, um, one by one. I will show you. No big deal. Um, and as you can see, they have beautiful black and white caterpillars, right? Now I would ask a spectator to hold out his hand, and I would place uh, the, uh, the 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 caterpillar right onto his hand. Now he should not um, colorize them with their, uh, with 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 uh, uh, just pencils, but with his imagination. And he can do this just by thinking, let's say, of a, of a rainbow, of all the colors of a rainbow. And uh, one by one, I would show all the caterpillars and uh, place the cards one by one onto his hand until all the cards are there. He should cover his hands and uh, think of all the colors of a rainbow. And if, and if he really has enough uh, fantasy and, and imagination, um, sometimes he would be so... Um, um, so strong that the caterpillars would not only be colorful, but they could even turn into butterflies. And when he really believes in it, then he would see that it turns green, blue, and red, and yellow. So all the colors of uh, different uh, butterflies, very beautiful ones. And um, yeah, that is the normal version, like the coloring butterflies, all four cards turn into all four different ones. Very colorful, very nice story. Now, uh, it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, it can be that the last one would not just be um, um, yeah, an, another caterpillar, but that this one would be a blank one. So let me see if I have it here. So when, he, uh, when you turn this card over, the card then would turn into nothing and meanwhile you would have taken out a caterpillar and and the nice part is that you are completely having everything as long as you have the cards in your hand you are completely equipped to also steal a butterfly away and stick this onto the back of your spectator hand so that when he um, has these four cards and the last one did not really move i would ask okay one more time think of all the colors of the rainbow uh, put the cards in your hand and then wave your hand above and that would be the moment where he would realize oh wow there's something happening here and um, yeah these these kinds of cards uh, they they're perfectly these these images these stickers perfectly match to the to the um, cards that i found here the images of the butterflies and this would be a very very nice souvenir that you can give away as the butterfly has selected the spectator and not uh, the cards in his hand what is a really nice story um, I can only highly recommend that you get everything. You get the envelope, what is also an interesting part, uh, uh, piece to keep your cards inside because there's stickiness involved, as you uh, as you already heard about my uh, with my introduction. So when I um, uh, release it, this card has sticky stuff on it, and uh, it cannot stick to the paper because here is uh, silica paper in it. To keep it safe and all the other cards would wait um, there behind it like this that would be the version to let all the uh, four caterpillars uh, the four butterflies appear or you would replace the yellow one with that one and now the last one would be empty and you would have to choose this one here that's all you need um, and i highly recommend even if you get this picture here um, I, I, I uh, suggest that you should go to um, how are they called these 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 pawn shops or any any uh, antique shop and 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 stroll around. I have found so many beautiful old photos um, from the past in there, and you should really you should really 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 take this offer if you uh, um, um, this this effort if you ever want to do storytelling magic. Find as many. Uh, things as possible from the past that would fit into the story and if it's an old photo if it's an old envelope if it's an old tin box i have old tin boxes that are rusty and very old and so on and so on and i can take out the cards from there and maybe there's an old marble in there as well and so on and so on so that the whole story is so believable the more you add to it the more beautiful uh it will work and it's super strong. You should not underestimate this. So that is metamorphosis, uh, a really a trick, um, very favorite of mine. Now let's do one more uh, because at the same time I did uh, Mona Lisa's secret, 
um, on the same um, print run. And uh, Mona Lisa's Secret is kind of a, a story um, or has an evolution over about 10 years. Because at the beginning, uh, when I started doing magic, I, and, uh, I produced playing cards for a friend of mine from uh, Munich, uh, Alexander Christ, and um, he was also uh, helping out a dealer like Philo is helping me from time yeah, every week here and uh, otherwise as well. And he was helping a dealer here in Germany and was selling the original, what is called Masterpiece Forgery, uh, for so many times. And he liked this trick very well and it was sold out, did not come back and so on and so on. So he asked me, could you do this one more, uh, one more time? So he gave me his, his last set uh, to figure out if I could do it. I saw it and um, I saw the very, very poor quality of the original and um, the handling was not good. There, were, there was a mistake in the presentation and the, in the order of the cards and so on and so on. So I brought it, I, I fixed everything, I brought it to a different level, made the, the cards nicer and so on and so on. And re-released this as Mona Lisa's Secret, certainly giving credits and I met this gentleman the uh, the inventor of the original in Las Vegas one time and he loved what turned out uh, from his trick. He stepped out of magic so I, it was a little bit harder to meet him but someone who was at the magic convention knew him from the past and he allowed us to meet so I was very happy uh, to, to meet the gentleman as well. Um, and now let me show you what the Mona Lisa secret is. It's not not really a, a, a trick with playing cards. However, at the end, the, the normal playing cards are involved. We will come to this a little bit later. Now, uh, in the German stream, I, I did a big explanation and I told a lot about playing cards and so on and so on. Um, I think for all the international audience, uh, you might not need all the information about the paintings. Uh, but but you are familiar with uh, Mona Lisa, uh, Mona Lisa uh, who was painted in around uh, 1508, I think. Uh, if you ever had the chance to see her in Louvre, this is something that I still have on my bucket list. I heard that it's a little bit of frustration because it's so deep behind glass and then it's a very small, small painting. So don't expect it to be very, very big. It's, it's really a small one and um, you might be surprised. Anyhow, let me uh, show you. We have several of these images. The first one was the Mona Lisa, as you know. The second one is from a more modern painter. His name is René Magritte from Belgium. This painting was done in 1962. The name was called Son of Man. On, and uh, he, he was very famous for doing something very realistic, um, but he was adding something very strange to it, optical illusions, etc. Really, really clever thing. So if you ever want to Google René Magritte, you will see a lot of interesting paintings that you will love. Uh, and one of them is, for instance, uh, a painting of a, of a pipe uh, uh, that says, Ce n'est pas un pipe. Uh, this is not a pipe because it's just a painting of a pipe. What is kind of cool. Um, anyhow, the third one is uh, from the 16th chapel. Um, um, it's it's God. It's a, a very short. Uh, it's a zoom in to God who is creating the sun, moon, and the planets on the fourth day of the creation. I hope it's the fifth, fourth day. Otherwise, um, <clears throat> and then we have a very early masterpiece of uh, a neighbor's uh, daughter. <laughs> yes, it's not King a Lion King, etc., etc. This uh, was uh, the girl that um, lived nearby, it was my neighbor when she was 12. She um, later studied art as well. So uh, it's easy to say that this is um, an early masterpiece. Uh, well, with at least one painting that I knew. <laughs> there you go. Now, anyhow. Um, one of the paintings was a forgery. You might have seen there was something fishy about it um, and that was not real. And if you think that is the, 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 the line here, it's not. This is authentic, but one of the other ones is fake. Uh, let me show you one more time. Maybe you will get the idea. So here we have uh, Mona Lisa and uh, well, 
you might have uh, already known with uh, the, the movies, uh, the Da Vinci Code, etc., that Leonardo Da Vinci always was adding several details into his paintings that you might not see when you glimpse at this. So uh, it's not about Mona Lisa holding a playing card, uh, a card in her hand. Uh, actually, Mona Lisa was never ever play, uh, painted from behind. So maybe you have not seen this, but um, well, this is the forgery. Uh, it's not the real one. The other ones are all okay. Anyhow, I told you several information about it, but did you notice in which hand she was holding her card? Was it in her right, in her left hand? Do you remember that? Actually, if you don't have to think about it, but just do it, it's much easier. So I'm taking out the deck of cards, and uh, then I would go through the cards one by one. You can, you can point to anyone, say stop, like this. You would hand out this card to the spectator, and he would now have to pretend being Mona Lisa. I'm showing you like this. Is it this hand, this hand? So until he figures out, okay, it's like, no, it's red. No, I think it's this one. Yeah, exactly. So you're doing it like Mona Lisa, same one, and you would be asked, please smile, get the idea. Um, and when you turn over the card, maybe you want to show it also to a spectator nearby, he will notice, no, there's something wrong because even if I was remembering, she was holding a, re uh, 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 a red card. Maybe you can see it. Does it see? See? Right? That that is correct. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like this. Whatsoever. <laughs> Anyhow, I have to turn over my card and now it's a 100 percent perfect match. It's the same card that she's holding. And uh yeah, that's it. Uh, you can either show a nine of spades or a four of clubs or a king of hearts. You can exchange all the cards. Mona Lisa is also included that uh, when she's holding a blue deck. In case you are performing with blue cards uh, when you're performing so you are fully equipped anyhow you want to do it and this trick is so easy I would love to show you how it's done because it's really really easy this card will stay on top of the deck as a force uh, I'm coming to this in a second and here we have um, actually one card plus and I'm resetting for a very quick uh, moment uh, we have this and this indifferent card that will be uh, later placed onto the table uh, will go down onto the bottom face down. Now what you're doing, first of all, you have uh, the Mona Lisa, you have the Son of Man, you have God and then the Lion. These cards are all correct and then the other one that you hide with the revelation on it. Uh, in a second you will understand what else is uh, is going on here. Now, the only trick move that you're doing at the beginning is that you are taking uh, a break above the bottom card. And I just did it. It's that easy that you can do it on the fly. Very simple. All you do is you're pushing with your uh, index finger just across diagonally. And therefore, this card is coming apart. And you can, you can take a break here above the uh, top, bottom card and that would be totally invisible as the front will still stay the same and all nothing has changed seemingly now when you take off the top card this goes into into the gap and after pushing her in the gap you can close everything and you are done there's no more trick move for now all you do is you show number three and number four and so far nothing happened now, what you have to do is secretly turning over the whole packet. You can do it by gesturing and coming back, what I just did. Um, you can do it under any other um, uh, yeah, uh, circumstance. The best thing is that you are, when you're performing it, you are waiting for the second when the spectator is looking into your eyes. Because when he's looking into your eyes, you can do down here whatever you want. A small elephant can walk through. He would not notice uh, anyhow. Now, as I turned over the card, uh, I did it. Uh, yeah, once um, you are ready because now we have a double uh, double faces as well because you, the cards never had any backs, right? So when I take this one out, you will see the Mona Lisa now uh, with the uh, playing card in her hand. And the nice addition of uh, using science friction is that now instead of doing a double that I would have to do it with a, yeah with counting two cards off, I just have to do I push on the center, push all all the cards um, aside so I would see even four cards. 
because these two are holding together like science, uh, like one card with science friction. So all I have to take it, I take it, turn it over, place it on top. Was that the coolest, easiest double lift in the world? One more time. That's it. Very clean, very simple, a double lift right in front. Now all you have to do is you're taking the top card away, put it onto the table, it's already exchanged, having the nine of spades or any other prediction. And here you have the other uh, son of man, so seemingly nothing happened. Certainly below is the other one that, uh, that you saw earlier on. And when you place this package away, that's it, you're clean. All you have to do now is force uh, a card in this particular case, it would be the Nine of Space. That was a force that I learned from J uh, Jay Sankey when I started, uh, because the force would be on top. I would just deal a few cards down. Uh, you can say stop when, ah, you know what, point to any card you like. All I'm doing is I'm gathering cards here whenever he says stop. All I have to do is I push them together. This card comes to the bottom. I take this away. Seemingly that was the selection that the spectator took. And when he is then re revealing his card and I'm revealing my card, they perfectly match. Uh, interesting part about this interesting story um, by Alexander Christ. He said, when you're doing it with the king of hearts, people try to rub off the ink. Uh, somehow um, several colors are more unbelievable, while just one ink is kind of okay. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, it's, it's more believable. Don't ask me why. Uh, play around with it and you will find out uh, if, it, if it's really true for him as well, right? Now, all you have to do for the reset is you have the packet here. You take the second card from the bottom, flip it over, Oopala, flip it over back on, and this card goes underneath and you already reset. This goes back into the package. You could either stay with the nine of spades or put another force uh, there for the next table so that it's not always the same card. And uh, you're ready to go to do it the second time um, um, again without a big reset. So that's Mona Lisa's secret. I think a really cool pack a trick without being too playing cards focused, even if at the end she is holding a playing card. Yeah, so here we go. Um, as I'm talking completely alone today, sorry, I need a small little zip. Ah. Great. Now, I would like to uh, do one more, and that is something uh, by Trevor Lewis. Uh, Trevor Lewis is, um, I think he's Scottish. Um, at least he's not, or Walesish, from Wales. I'm a little bit skeptic. He's not just British uh, or English. How many Mona Lisa Force cards are available? Actually, three. We have the Four of Clubs, Nine of Spades, and the King of Hearts. But the, the, the reveal is printed 100%. Now, I can also tell you that I did it for a, a magician who then stepped back and I produced it already. I have made one prediction. It's always the same, sorry. Um, but I made a lot of those cards uh, over uh, um, uh, in, in large bulk. So if you really want to hand out a souvenir at the end of the presentation, I could also provide you with just one force Mona Lisa on top so that I'm not so sure if it's a three of spades or something like this. It's a fourth value. And uh, if you want to have this card, let's say 20, 30 times or so, let me know. And you can get this on top um, somehow and you can always give these cards out as a souvenir. I think that's cool as well. Just had the idea uh, because I'm still sitting on these cards and uh, this gentleman never took them. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I now um, take the money before I go into print to learn your lesson. Now, here we go. This is the homing card, a great routine. The original is from Fred Cups. Uh, you should really Google uh, or search it on YouTube, his presentation. He's a little bit different and it's more, actually it's more sleight of hand. And Fred Cups, he's from uh, uh, Netherlands. Uh, he was so awesome, um, very funny guy, and magic just happened. Oh, Welsh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You Googled it and, and, and searched for it, yes. So um, the, um, uh, the magic happened to him. So it's not like he is in control and things 
uh, and he can do everything that he wants, but uh, magic is happening to him and he's struggling. He was the first ever doing it uh, in very gentleman style. Uh, very nice. So if you are looking for uh, magic of uh, Fred Cups, you should see the, 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 the salt shaker uh, with the egg when, when the salt is pouring from his hand and it's not just stopping and the music has to repeat and repeat and repeat. Uh, if you now look Mario Lopez, uh, he's, he's he's giving homage uh, to Fred Caps when he does it now with with his magic as well. It's wonderful. And uh, now Trevor Lewis and Fred Caps, both about the same age, they uh, work together on this effect. And Bob Sheets, I think, had a little bit to it um, for the last revelation. And uh, so Trevor Lewis had this trick um, also made for himself. Uh, with less slides, um, just the presentation was very similar. And uh, he made it with more bigger cards. Back then, Fred Cups used the small little, I think it was even bridge cards. You might see it there in the uh, YouTube video that uh, Michael put into the chat. Uh, may, um, maybe, Michael, could you also put this uh, link down in the comments for all the guys who are watching this video not live? Thank you. And um, and he wanted to have these cards made bigger uh, for the stage and um, he used the cards from uh, El Duco back then, from a Swedish producer, uh, not longer alive and the playing card manufacturer uh, didn't survive during the last few years. And uh, I had an alternative idea and he was more or less responsible for starting the whole idea with the slightly larger cards, the parlor cards. And it's a longer story, um, maybe i share it with you. I was printing playing cards on a laser printer back then and I needed to have cards where I can print to the edge, so no white borders around it uh, for uh, throwing Monty, uh, like casino cards that have a print right to the border. And this was only possible if I would have bigger cards, then print as far as I can and then cut it back to the size of poker cards. So I had already the cards in this dimensions, just not the corners certainly, because I needed to print poker size cards. But when um, Trevor Lewis was asking me, I used these samples and and made everything bigger to have a very visual presentation. I guess his explanation here on the DVD is still using the old design with uh, jumbo indexes and the inner part even smaller, etc. I'm not, I haven't seen it for a while. I hope I remember the whole ending myself. And I would like to show you Trevor Lewis's five, um, the, the famous five red card trick. Now let me show you to, the, to you. Uh, it all contains uh, just, uh, yeah, this, the famous uh, five uh, red cards. And it's, it's called the five red card trick because it's all, not only red on this side, but certainly it's also uh, red on uh, this side. Now, what you do with the five red cards is, is, wait a second. Oh yeah, that's uh, kind of weird. Um, there should not, no, 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 one more time. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, it's it's it works as well with four cards. It's not as nice. It's the famous four red card trick. Uh, it's an, a variation of the five red card trick, and the order of the five of the four red cards doesn't really matter. So it can be in any order. And what you have to do is you are taking the four red cards and you you. Okay, that's strange. Um, check something. That is really weird okay uh, we have to adapt a little bit um there's another trick that works also with three red cards uh, let me show you the order of this is it doesn't matter it could be in any order like upside down to the side it doesn't matter so what you're doing is you're taking the three cards and all you have to do are you wait a second that is okay uh Okay, the famous, not so famous, um, not at all famous, uh, uh, two red card trick, yeah, so, and that looks good so far, yes. So what you can do with the two cards is, oh, all you have to do is you're spinning one of the um, red, uh, 
the not at all famous card with only one card. I wanted to show you this. Uh, however, even if I throw this one in the air and I snap it, even that one will turn and it will not work. So I'm sorry, out of the trick, uh, that's the homing card. I hope you like the presentation. It's, uh, it's the tricky one <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> How did you like the uh, presentation, Michael? Did it work with the last one? Uh, and that was the idea with the last uh, card. It's a little bit easier if you are gluing uh, two cards together. That was the um, idea of uh, Bob Sheets printing two cards together for the catch. And I did two times. One time in the German stream and here in the English one and I catch them both times. So um, what, um, yes, so the last change will be, you have a double facer, right? And all you have to do is, um, well, uh, Trevor Lewis is doing it. Well, 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 I'm throwing it up. I'm trying to catch it in a way that I'm catching it like so, right? So the moment I'm touching it, it will uh, flip and, 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 and being black. However, Trevor is doing it in a way that he is taking the cards from the bottom. And when he's throwing it up, he's already throwing up the black side so that he's already catching the black one without any problems. Yes, so that's an idea. Um, he's, he's, he's taking it from the bottom and when he's throwing, he's going up, turning it uh, uh, over already before uh, catching it so that uh, when you take it, yeah. I like the other presentation. It, I'm just throwing it up. <laughs> and now I dropped. <laughs> Caught it once <laughs> in five times. <laughs> I will try one more time. Oops. Yeah, and here you go. It works. <laughs> I should just do it with the right hand. It's a little bit of training. Give it a go. And it's really a nice, nice trick. It's called Homing Card. Trevor Lewis. It's available on our website. Have fun with it. And I'm just reaching for the one card on the floor so that I'm cleaning up immediately. And here we go. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, this is the story to the, uh, the famous parlor size cards. Now we have um, a few more. One trick that did not survive the fire, unfortunately. Uh, what is a really cool trick by a friend of mine from Belgium. And this is uh, Raphael. Uh, okay, I have to show you a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe you know this gentleman a little bit bigger. Uh, Raphael from Belgium. The interesting part is, let me show you this, this trick. It's, it's really clever because it is uh, using something that many magicians are used to or familiar with. Even some lay people who buy a very cheap magic trick where one card is transformed magically. Um, and I will show you just the idea of this. Uh, so what you have is you are having uh, the the, th uh, the two black cards and one uh, winner card, the queen. Maybe, maybe I do it from here. So we have uh, the two black and the, the winner card here. And you have to follow the winner card. Let's try it one more time. So um, what I'm doing is uh, I'm mixing it one more time and you would have, it's very easy. You have to figure out where the queen is and certainly the queen is in the center. Now I have to destruct you a little bit more. So when I'm mixing them up, uh, once or twice, I would then start uh, eliminating one of the cards by turning one over. Uh, it's, it's more or less out of the game. And now it's getting more and more impossible to follow the queen. Believe it or not, it is. Now, still an idea where it is? Maybe I have to help you a little bit more. I'm taking out a second card from the pack. Uh, maybe I'll even put those away. Now, if I have only one card left over, which card do you think there was this one? The Queen of? If you think it was the Queen of Hearts, you would be absolutely wrong because it was the Queen of England. Um, the interesting part about this trick is, I think it's super funny. It wasn't that easy to find a queen that I would be able to use uh, because the original was not allowed to be used. And the British people were not so amused. Um, <laughs> Well, it's kind of sad because uh, if a Belgian guy is thinking of something and a German is producing it and the English are not liking it, 
Maybe it's not so good. <laughs> I would love to uh, exchange it maybe with a, a drag queen or uh, I don't know, with a, with a band queen. I don't know. Uh, several ideas would come into my mind as well. Now this trick also uh, works with, um, with the king of hearts and the card will then turn into, the, uh, into Elvis, the king of rock and roll. So that is uh, a nice twist as well, depending on what you want to show. Maybe for the Americans, the Elvis is good. I still have a handful of those tricks. Uh, the, call, uh, the trick is called Riot, Raphael's Riot. Riot is um, an abbreviation for Royal Imposters Observation Test. So Royal Imposters Observation Test, Riot. The band idea sounds perfect, yes. Uh, however, they are not there anymore and if the queen passes away then we are really into big trouble. So I maybe it is... Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's her name? She had this, this, this show in the US TV. Uh, forgot about her or him. Um, the drag queen, maybe it would be him uh, on the picture as well. What could, what could be interesting. Anyhow, this trick is very simple. Uh, you have the two cards and if you're thinking of a flap, um, that is covering the, the queen. You might be right. However, as you can see, there is no flap on this side. Now I'm turning this just over for a very short moment and the rest you have to figure out yourself, okay? So, because at the beginning I could show you everything very, very clean and there are only really three cards invo invo uh, involved. It's an awesome good trick and I'm 100% sure that this trick has to be re-released but this time maybe not with the Queen of England but another Queen. So help me in the chat or in the comments which Queen you would like to see and I'm open for suggestions, definitely. Um, yeah, what else do we have? We have um, <laughs> espionage, one of our favorite tricks. Um, it was, oh my god, it's so good. Then we have... Um, uh, one night you can't stand and well I leave one out that is a German trick um, that is the BS trick of Wayne Dobson one thing here so um, with us I can show you the the three tricks. Unfortunately, with this one here, I would need someone doing it with me. And unfortunately, um, Philo is not here. Um, and we already showed it once, twice uh, in, in our YouTube stream. So I'm leaving this one out. It's a great trick that you should always have on you because it's very flat. You can put it into your pocket, are always equipped. And it's uh, the, the cool thing about this is that it's kind of jazz magic because it changes every time you perform it. Um, so that um, you, don't, you don't get tired of it. And you can even do it two or three times with the spectator, making it even stronger. stronger. So that's uh, really, really cool. Uh, Mark, thank you for voting for King and Elvis. I'm giving you two choices. So the King and Elvis will stay anyhow. The, the, the question would be, what about the women? What about the Queen of Hearts? That would be interesting. And um, by the way, with espionage, we now released also the espionage point blank. What you have with the espionage is that you have the symbols of ESP, uh, but you can um, uh, also come up with your own ideas of painting, uh, painting images or writing words or um, favorites. Uh, it could be um, fast food chains. It could be biggest fears. It could be everything. So uh, making it more personal, Personal, it's called Espionage Point Blank. Has also another great idea of Boris White on a totally different presentation. And you would even get the cards to do either Espionage and with the other set, the Boris White idea. That has nothing to do with Espionage. Uh, it's called, his, uh, his trick is called 10, I think. Yeah, 100%. Uh, one Night You Can't Stand is a lovely idea. Is it still the outdated design? I don't know. I don't know what you mean with outdated design. Um, I showed it so many times and I only... <laughs> Who says you are doing anything from the bottom? <laughs> but you're right. Um, anyhow, let me show you these two. Um, one is a quickie that is um, the, the trick with these, with these dogs. And the cool thing is, uh, well, you have all the breeds here on the backs uh, uh, shown. Um, the yeah the, the dogs 
that are breeded are not really the ones that we are used to back in the past centuries. Um, like, I mean, a, a British Bulldog, is it really a beautiful dog? Some would say, oh, I exactly have that one. Okay, good for you. It's not mine. Uh, I love the RuPaul. That's it, RuPaul. I would prefer having RuPaul on it. Uh, maybe I should contact her or him. Maybe he would or he, she would love it to be there on uh, part of it. Um, so here we go. Um, we have the uh, the bull, bulldog. Well, it's not really uh, the the highest possible form of breeding. And then we have another one that's a Shih Tzu. A Shih Tzu is a Japanese breed and very small, very fluffy. Uh, you might love it. Uh, if you have ever seen a, a, a wet ish, uh, Shih Tzu, it, it's more looking like a rat. Um, we have a small little dog uh, that is similar, but it's a street dog, what I love. Anyhow, we have the two ones, the Bulldog and the Shih Tzu. And um, well, you know that all these breeds existed because we started crossing different uh, others that we already found, figured out. And uh, so here's the question, what would happen if you would start uh, crossing um, um, a Shih Tzu and a Bulldog. I mean, really crossing them. And that's the interesting part. It would turn out into uh, bullshit. And therefore, yeah, that's the revelation of this trick. Very funny idea of uh, Wayne Dobson. And uh, thank you, Wayne, for doing this. Uh, it really is a lot of fun and great for kids as well, even if they are not allowed to say these, this word. Um, yeah, great presentation, very easy to do. Uh, instant reset, very simple. So I hope you love it. I'll put it aside. And actually, I'm already here, reset. And I could perform it immediately again. Last but not least, because the rest is, I think, German, I guess, would be um, the one night you can't stand. And let me show you, then you can tell me if it's outdated or not. Because the girls that I'm using, that I, that I, that I selected, I find them all beautiful and what you get is I do it here in front um, so that you can have a closer look like this. Uh, we have this um, Jennifer Aniston look-alike. I mean she's uh, even the original the yeah, Jennifer Aniston is really hot anyhow. Uh, we have uh, an Asian lady. Very cute, very pretty. Um, maybe to show it here. Okay. Ah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Then we have uh, a Russian princess, an Eastern uh, lady. We have uh, an Irish girl. We have um, a British girl. We have Nubian princess. It's really up to you which you want, which one you want to select. So now well, we, we are back to Jennifer. Have the girls been updated ever since in its first release? Uh, no, not in the, it's not really been so big out there, but no, I have not updated the girls yet. Should I? Do they have to? Anyhow, you can still make a selection. They are standing for a certain type, so it doesn't matter if it's, if it's, uh, oh, you like the British girl? Okay, so it's, it's up to you if it, it could have been the British one or the Irish, it's, it's your choice. So I, I think I would go for the Irish. Could be the British, anyhow. So if I'm taking out the, uh, the, the, the Irish one, um, I could still show you the other ones, as you know, right? But you definitely selected her. And that's the kind of weird thing, because um, not the best choice that you took. Anyhow, if you go for the, uh, the British one, let me show this to, her, uh, to you as well. Here we go. Um, she would not be very stunning as well. Actually, none is very stunning. Uh, don't need to update. No, 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 it does not. The interesting part is uh, it's, uh, it's using two methods. It's not only magical, but it's using an optical illusion called um, uh, the Thatcher illusion. Was famous uh, was made famous back then in the 70s or 80s uh, with the uh, picture of Margaret Thatcher, where you are twisting the eyes and the mouth um, there's even an app out there and so on and so on. So uh, when you see um, someone, a face upside down and the eyes and the mouth are already reversed, you are not getting what is going on there. 
uh, they totally st uh, look okay and only if you are then turning the face upside down or the, in the right way then you notice that something is wrong but until then when when the when the face is upside down you have uh yeah no idea tyler twombly full pen and teller with this effect nice nice yeah i had very big successes with this as well so it, I don't know what was it was he using my cards or was he using something different then because um yeah it took me a while to come up with the whole idea oh penguin magic okay interesting interesting i'm learning something anyhow they, these are the uh effects that i would like to show you today um if it's kind of similar Ty uh, what tyler does i hope he gives credits because it was our idea or my idea so I hope this uh, works out. <laughs> Use Penn and Teller's faces. Oh, okay, very old. Uh, so he was definitely using my idea because we were doing this for so long. Actually, I have to say, I have to give credit, credit to an, a German uh, magic dealer because back then it was um, Hakan Farol doing it with several uh, girl pictures. I think there was even a boy picture on it. However, there was no chance of showing the girls uh, in the in the correct way, so it was more like a like a gag. I loved it. I did it for myself for a while, but there was no magic involved. So the 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 the, the obvious turning between seemingly beautiful girls, and you can see all the beautiful girls, to the ugly ones. Um, is totally magical and can be done under the eye of a spectator. Immediately he has, he has no idea what's really working there. Um, but uh, Hakan never solved this problem. He just produced the uh, odd looking girls. And uh, this part is missing. So I yeah, went one step further and, and came up with that idea. So uh, yeah, um, interesting. Every, every single trick come, somehow, it's, it's not coming out of nowhere. You always get um inspirations and ideas and you see something where you think wow you could you could go a step further or this is wrong you should fix this one etc etc and then you can come up with your own thing as said i do custom prints so if you for instance have the uh the uh, trick where we have these uh um traffic signs and you would like to have it in your language or in for your country or you have something similar uh, then let me know, we can work on this and I do a custom print for you. And it will be your single trick that only works for you, for your presentation and so on and so on. Um, why not? It's, it's so much fun to do. Um, talking about this, I am in touch with uh, a magic dealer from France right now. They have such a great trick idea that needs to be produced, that is not easy to be produced. So finally they came to me because I think I will be the one who can solve it. And when you see this trick, you will be amazed. So at the moment I'm working on this, I'm hoping to be able to, uh, to be allowed to produce it for them. And if then I would love to be part of this and uh, you will be the first to know what is coming. It's an awesome trick. It's a complete new twist to let's say cartoon in a very, very funny way. And uh, yeah, it will still need a few more months, but uh, you, you want to have it. Anyhow, I hope you had a great time. I had a great time. Next week, we will uh, be again here, two people in front of the camera. Um, and um, we then finally will talk about all this stuff that was uh, waiting for you. Uh, I would love to show you how to do the Hammond count in a very fine way the jordan the elmsley count how to train it and so uh, next week we have the last part of um, let's say uh, this trilogy so uh, talking about packet tricks what you can do with them and maybe i'm even looking up another sleight of hand that you should be able to do when you do packet tricks uh, to have it easier because a lot of packet tricks are using the same moves over and over again um, and you should master them to not struggle and start sweating when pulling out a few cards uh, out of your pocket oh, and showing a great packet trick. I hope you had a great time. I hope you will have a very safe and uh, pleasant week coming up. Stay healthy, stay magical. And until next Monday, until then, bye-bye. Cheers.